Hi, my name is Carlos Monsalve. I'm here to review James Cordova's proposition that the United States' presence in the world is weakening. He gives uh, three secondary claims. One, the U.S. dedication to defense is decreasing. Two, the, U the U.S. is reluctant to fight our enemies. And three, enemies of the U.S. seem to be getting stronger. Let's go to his first claim. Uh, James mostly talks about defense spending, so we'll stick to that for now. Uh, I want to get a term cleared. Uh, discretionary spending is the portion of the budget that is decided by Congress through the annual appropriations process each year. And according to the national priorities, uh, an article in the national priorities, the military spending makes up the highest percent at 53.71% of this. So it's still a major uh, spending in the, the government. Now, in relation to the total spending, which is both discretionary and mandatory spending, the military makes up 15.88%, which is third of all the spending, which is still a great amount, considering all the other things. It's just under Social Security and Medicare. Um, he also mentions that it's slightly, it's um, decreasing by 8%, the, the spending. And in terms of dollars, military spending is slightly increasing. In 2015, it was 583 billion, and 2026, it is expected to be 771 billion, according to the White House. Darn. Yeah. Now, in terms of G GDP, uh, it is slightly decreasing. Um, in the same year, 2015, it was 3.3% in terms of the GDP, and in 2026, it's expected to be 2.3%, a 1% increase, uh, decrease, not a which is way less than an 8% that he mentioned before. Now, he also mentioned, uh, James also mentioned that the United States is a major uh, economy powerhouse in the world. And while this is true, um, in terms of GDP, the, this is true, they are also the highest in terms of debt. Um, to give you a little perspective, uh, the United States makes 14.6 trillion in GDP, and 92.7% is in debt, like ninety two percent of that is debt. So um, a lot of the co cost is just to um, balance out the debt that we're, we're, the United States is facing. Um, and history has proven that uh, debt always increases in, in terms of percent of GDP every time the U United States fights in wars. So uh, he could give the example that in World War Two. Um, that was the greatest uh, uh, in spending of military, yet it was also the highest that the debt has been, yeah, 112.7% of the GDP. Um, to go to his second claim, that the United States is fighting our aim, um, the United States is reluctant to fight our enemies, um, I'm going to refute it by saying that we're just fighting, the United States is fighting in different ways. Uh, James is uh, stating that the United States isn't fighting in terms of ground troops and and uh, just warfare in general yet, but the United States is still providing aid in different ways. Um, he gives the example of Syria, and the United States in Syria, their mission is train and advise. A quote from Obama says, as a general rule, their role is not to engage directly with the enemy, but rather to work with local forces that is consistent with our overall policy throughout. Meaning. They're not leaving Syria uh, abandoned. They're, they're, they're retraining them um, and advising them so that when the time comes uh, and so the government's overthrown, they can fend for themselves, which is something that we did not do um, in Iraq, which I read in, in uh, James's uh, example that we, uh, we pulled out too early. Um, and James' uh, last uh, claim that enemies of the U.S. seem to be getting stronger. Um, while this is true, uh, that is still does not mean that measures are not being taken by the, uh, the U.N. and uh, the Security Council, which the United States is a part of. In the same uh, CNN article that James used, all the way in the bottom, it says, uh, the Security Council is banning most of Nor uh, North Korea's uh, exports of natural resources, and this is due after uh, this, their successful nuclear launch. Uh, 
Not, not only that, they also prevented me the supply of aviation fuel and the sale of small arms. Inspections of all planes and ships carrying our cargo are also mandatory now for North Korea. So they're not they're not leaving North Korea just to do whatever they want. There is still strict uh, things that the UN plus the United States are doing to uh, be be a presence. Thank you. <laughs> Right, structurally everything's easy to follow. On the first point, you talk about defense spending and you put it into a reasonable context talking about how much money we're actually spending. Uh, you compare the different percentages. Uh, that seems a lot more elaborate than whatever the advocate talked about. I don't think you do the contrasting sort of thing as well as you might, but you do have some good information to support the position that uh, suggests that military spending is a substantial part of the budget. It is generally increasing. The total amount of money being spent is high. There was one place where you got a little bit confused with your statistics and it, you know, you were making a prediction that it was going to drop from 23% to 2%. Yeah, I think you actually meant 22% because later on you said it's only a percentage difference. So it's just the way you said it that was a little bit awkward. You want to make sure that you're always clear on those arguments because, you know, I, that's a 20, that's a substantial decrease, you know, if we go from 23% down to 2%. I didn't think that that's really what you meant. Um, and then uh, you had... Uh, You know, it was a whole bunch of information in contrast to what the total amount of the budget or the gross national product is or the uh, GDP. Um, I don't think that you made clear what your argument was here. And, uh, you know, all of those numbers, I'm sure they mean something, but you're not explaining what you think they mean. Uh, and I think that the, I guess the argument that you make at the end that says, look, that it was highest at the level of uh, World War II, and that seems to be a higher level than is necessary at current times under the existing circumstances, or that what we're spending is the equivalent of, the, of that. I, I just didn't think that it was very clear. You, you had a lot of information there, but you weren't explaining what it meant uh, and what inference or conclusion we should be drawing there. <coughs> On the uh, second point, you basically are addressing the issue of the U.S.'s willingness to engage um, in different places, and you talk about Syria. You've got a quote from Obama talking about what our uh, strategy is going to be in that situation. Um, that sounds a little bit vague and ambiguous. I don't remember what the advocate's information was on that particular point, or even if they cited specific information, or if they just mentioned Syria as an example. Um, you kind of agree with the issue about Iraq, but I think there's a point to be said that says, look, that's you know, so six years ago, why are we still talking about this issue? The question is, what's going on right now? Are we engaged in places where there are dangers? And I don't think it would be hard to point out that uh, the United States is engaged in a lot of uh, military activity overseas when they say we're not engaging our enemies. Well, I don't know, just open up a newspaper and look how many terrorists did we drone bomb you know, last week, you know, uh, how many uh, uh, attacks have we engaged in in uh, different parts of the world as a way of addressing those kinds of issues. I think that a few examples would probably illustrate that plenty. And then on the last point, I thought that your argument was uh, very well directed at North Korea. I don't remember if the advocate had any other examples that other than North Korea, but it was pretty specific, although your source citations need to be a little bit more complete there. <clears throat> okay, thank you.